Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade polynomial system. I call this problem homemade. It's no big deal, but I kind of came up with the idea and I'll tell you the trick. So hopefully anyone can come up with something like this. And I encourage you to do that because writing problems actually is a fun activity. It also teaches you a lot of good skills. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's get to the problem. We have x plus y minus z is equal to 13, and x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to xy plus xz plus yz. So this is kind of like a weird system because we have th three variables and only two equations. So that kind of tells me, are we solving a Diophantine system? Are we looking for integer or rational solutions? Not necessarily. We're going to be solving for real values. So how is that possible? Well, there are some special cases for which this is possible. And in some cases, obviously, you're going to have infinitely many solutions. So normally, when you have three variables and two equations, and if you're looking for real solutions, it's normally infinitely many solutions. Anyway, I talk too much. Let's get to work. So I'll be presenting a couple different methods. First of all, I kind of want to try something without knowing these identities. So I'm going to pretend I'm not familiar with these identities, okay? And then second method will be kind of like the goal. So I'm looking at the first equation, the top one, the blue one, and I'm kind of thinking that's a linear relationship and the second one is quadratic. So I could probably square the first one to get something that will help me with the second one. So th let's go ahead and do it. Why not, right? So you don't always have a good reason to do it. Just square the expression and a plus b plus c squared. Remember that formula, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And then I'm going to be getting something like plus 2xy and then minus 2xz because z, is minus, z has a minus sign, minus 2yz. And that'll equal 169, which is 13 squared. Okay, great. So I do know x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Do I? Well, kind of. I do know that at least it's equal to this, so I can go ahead and replace this with xy plus xz plus yz, and then add the 2xy, and then minus 2xz, and then minus 2yz, and that equals 169. Awesome. Let's go ahead and simplify this. xy plus 2xy is 3xy, and then xz minus 2xz is minus xz, and then same thing with yz, and that's equal to 169. Do you think that's helpful? doesn't look very promising, but that's what we have. So what else can I do? So this didn't really give me anything helpful. Uh, maybe I should isolate the z or x plus y. So we have x plus y minus z. So let's go ahead and isolate the x plus y. And then hopefully I can just square both sides and get something helpful. If I square this, I get x squared plus y squared plus 2xy, and from here I get z squared plus 26z plus 169. Something similar, but this time we have a z, z squared, so on and so forth. Now what else do I have, right? Well, I kind of know that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to xy plus xz plus yz, right? So from here, I, I'd like to do the following. I'm going to bring this z squared over here with a minus sign. Because when I add them, they're going to cancel out somewhat. Or I can subtract them and x squared, y squared cancel out. So maybe I can just do that. Let me try. Uh, subtract z squared. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Subtract z squared. And then add negative 2xy or subtract 2xy. And I should be getting the following. When you add these two equations uh, or subtract, which one do you want to do? Actually, I want to subtract this way. So x squared, y squared cancels out, and then I get 2z squared. Remember, we're subtracting that way. xy, and that's going to give me 3xy, and then plus xz minus 26z plus yz minus 169. Again, this is not really helping much. Uh, I'm getting something more complicated than the original ones, so I kind of give up, right? Don't give up because we're going to do the second method. So first method is not very fruitful. Not very helpful. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. At least I tried, right? Okay, so here's how this goes. We have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals xy plus xz plus yz, and x plus y minus z equals 13. Let me tell you something. 
the first equation, I guess that was the first one, right? Did I give you the first one first? Okay, that one is the first one. Now the first equation, let's call this first and the second, could be different. So I could have given you x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed, even something more complicated, and you could still solve the system. You know why? Because the trick is in the second one. Okay, we're going to look at the second one really closely. So notice that I have the sum of squares and I have the products, the sum of products. So here's what I can do. I can put everything on the same side. I could also use something very helpful. Remember the cubic identity? We talked about it recently, right? This is factorable and x plus y plus z is one of the factors. And the other factor, do you remember that? It is x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus xy minus xz minus yz. So in this case, it's equal to zero. So if that's equal to zero, then this is equal to zero and x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed equals that. But do you think the cubic is going to help us here? Not really. So we're going to do the following. We're going to factor the second expression or equation. How? First of all, we're going to put everything on the same side, like before. But not only that, we're going to make it factorable. And in this case, the idea is called completing the squares. Squares? There's more than one. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to double this whole thing. And of course, it's going to be zero still. So this gives us 2x squared plus 2y squared plus 2z squared minus 2xy minus 2xz minus 2yz. By the way, we could have done this without doubling, but doubling makes it easier. Trust me on that, okay? Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to extract, because of the presence of negative 2xy and the squares, I'm going to take out an x squared with the negative 2xy and just add another y squared. So I used one of these, right, one of each, and then I'm going to do the same thing with x and z, and then with y and z. And notice that it just works out. Isn't that amazing? This is a really nice, beautiful identity, which allows us to actually split up into the sum of three squares. And remember, x, y, z are real numbers. Did I say that? Hopefully I did. Now we get the following. x minus y quantity squared plus x minus z quantity squared plus y minus z quantity squared equals zero. Now, when you have a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals zero, and if a, b, c are real, this implies three things. a is equal to zero, b is equal to zero, and c is equal to zero. So it's really nice that from a single equation, we can get three different results. So that's very rare, right? Now, here's what it means. All of these are zero, which means x, y, z are all equal. Yay, awesome. And looking at the second equation now, things become a lot easier. If these are all equal, why not set them all equal to x? So this is x and this is x, which means x plus x minus x equals 13. Ta-da! This gives me x equals 13, but also y equals 13, but also z equals 13. Now you can test out, you can add their squares, you can multiply them you know, like pairwise, add them up, you'll always get the same answer. Well, xy and x squared are basically the same thing because they are all equal. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.